right, hello everybody and welcome back. What's hello up? Amber, thanks for coming out. Glad to be back. We're live, we're live with more uh, Adobe Premiere Rush with Amber Torrielba, <laughs> someone you will recognize if you load up Rush on the loading screen. You know, it's, uh, you know I'm, I'm not usually this close to famous people, so <laughs> this is terrific. Uh, uh, flattering. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone who's come into the chat to be here live with us. We got uh, Alberto back today, we got uh, Francis Francis Sherlock here today, and uh, everyone in the chat, let us know where you're from, let us know what you're doing, and if you have any questions or requests, we have a, someone's like to request something, please, you know, shoot them at us, we'll, uh, we'll take what we can get over here. And if you get active in the chat, we're giving away a bunch of free stickers for about half an hour, so we can count down about that, so be active in the chat, you can win some stuff. We also have a challenge going on today, so download Rush for yourself, check out the challenge tab on behance.com slash live. Uh, where you will see our challenge tab. If you're watching this on YouTube, we can't see your chats, so come to Behance Live, log in. Yeah. We, want, we want to see you, we want to know where you're from, and uh, you know, get involved on the challenge. The challenge today, yesterday, we asked you to edit and show us some animals. Today, we'd like to see something about Halloween. You know, is, that, is that scary for you? Is, that, uh, is it full of candy? Whatever it is for you, <laughs> you let us know. Amber, what do you like Halloween? You a Halloween person? I love Halloween. Actually, it's my sister's birthday today. She was born on Halloween, so it's always been a special one. Hmm. What's, what's it like to have to have a possessed person in the family? <laughs> that... uh, she's got, yeah. <laughs> she's another type. <laughs> <laughs> that could be good or bad. I don't know. Maybe. She's good. I love her. <laughs> All right, cool. So today we're continuing on. If you, uh, if you saw yesterday, then we had, uh, we were creating a day in the life vlog, is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're editing in Premiere Rush. So today, what are we doing? We are going to kind of tweak down the storyline, smooth some transitions. We'll also review some alternative uh, ways that you could possibly kind of take this storyline. We'll add some sound effects and we'll see how far we get with maybe some drone clips. And yeah, we'll uh, start getting it tweaked down to where, you know, we would want to post it on YouTube or possibly post it on mm. Instagram. And yesterday, those transitions were amazing. People Thank were you. People were loving it in the chat. The flow was going so well. You know, you had, you had great, you know, shot to shot transitions. We were, we were editing, you know, we're cutting on the music. It was terrific. It's very, you know, it was, it was coming together. It got really polished really fast, <laughs> you know. So I'm, I'm excited to see where we go next. Definitely. Let's open up this project um, and get right back into it. Load it up here. Funny thing, I realized uh, yesterday that um, it's still named Untitled. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good projects are. Yeah. yeah. So we are still under an untitled project, but um, we're actually, we'll end up calling it, you can always go back here and uh, we can call it um, California Living or something like that. Let's see. Let's call it California Living. Oh, and everyone in the chat, uh, we've got uh, Kevin Monahan up in the chat. He's from uh, in Rush Support. If you have any problems, you let him know. <laughs> let him <All> know. Right. <laughs> I also saw a lot of people like uh, Philippines, Netherlands. Like, mm. thanks for thanks for tuning in, guys. That's awesome. Saw some Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah, Cape there. Town. I did see that too. Have you uh, have you been to South Africa? No, I want to go really bad though. I see a lot of really cool videos and just the culture over there is awesome. Yeah, so there's uh, some surf too, but I'm kind of scared of the sharks. <laughs> As well, you should be. Sharks are scary. <laughs> they're they're kind of dangerous there. <laughs> I don't know. You're not often going out into the deep water with with them, right? Ah, well, Sometimes. I come from a place. Uh, where they breed and they're right on the shore. So <laughs> back in Florida, I would skimboard and literally within 10 feet of the shore in, in a place called Sebastian Inlet. If any of you are watching from Florida, you know all about it. And uh, we got lots of sharks. In Florida. Wow. It's a healthy respect of the sharks and leave, yeah. leave them alone. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun when you get a call from your buddy and they're like, hey, I just like my first dip on the paddle out. I put my hand down and it got me in the hand. I'm at the hospital, but I'll be all good. <laughs> Cool. It's a good attitude to have. You gotta stay positive. That's why I skimboard. Right. <laughs> but no, I want to become a pirate. Gotta love surfing. Um, one of my favorite things. Um, so this is kind of where we left off. Um, for those of you that maybe weren't joining in yesterday or didn't get a chance to watch the replay, um, what I what he was saying that I put together is basically kind of like a day in the life that I normally tie, that I edit and going around California doing a bunch of different activities and kind of finding a way to piece those activities together in like a very flowy motion and kind of 
have the the person watching be like, well, didn't expect that next. And that's like one of my styles that I like to edit the most is because I like to just kind of keep everybody on their toes and show my lifestyle as crazy as it is and like a feel of that because <laughs> <laughs> it's it's unpredictable for me. So I like to kind of relay that in my videos. <laughs> It's unpre unpredictable for you, it's going to be unpredictable for right. us. Right. The day is usually spontaneous even when I think I have it planned out. Right. So. <laughs> you got to plan for the unexpected. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we even got people from Egypt, so what's oh. up? That's awesome. Always want to go there. And Brazil. <laughs> I was so, going to say, have you done dune surfing before? Oh, uh, we, <laughs> me and Patty actually went to uh, Death Valley and we took the skimboard on oh. the dunes there and it was really fun. Um, There's a couple of times I ate it, but <laughs> <laughs> we made a little video out there and I want to definitely go back. It, it might be better with like, uh, like strapped in a little bit, right. like, like wakeboard style or sur snowboard style. Mm -hmm. um, but I got a lot of inspiration from, a, I saw one of the professional snowboarders went out there and uh, did something similar on the snowboard and it was really cool. Kind of incorporating different sports like that is always a good time. Yeah. <laughs> well, make sure you get on the round sand, guys. Not, yeah. not the rough sand. <laughs> so. Yeah. Don't start on the round and then go to the rough as well, because then you have that <laughs> momentum, and we don't want that. <laughs> Been there, done that. Not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so here's uh, here's what we're working with just kind of from yesterday, if you guys want to catch back up. We had this clip here where I grabbed my surfboard, and we're jumping out of the van, but we end up in the water. Um, we kind of edited on the beat a little bit, went to some surfing. And we kind of played around with what comes next, and this is not necessarily what has to come next, but um, we played around with the fact that, you know, we can go from surfing to skateboarding, you can go back into water, and all these crazy different transitions before you, you know, realize what's gonna happen next. And the cool thing is, is um, this storyline here doesn't have to play out this way, and we're kind of still in that process, uh, the creative process of figuring out how we're gonna actually pull it together in the end. Mm. So I've kind of found some light clips, some transitions that could possibly fit together that do now, but we'll see how we build that story. <laughs> yeah, it could, you could go so many different ways with things, you know, it's all about making choices. Yep, we're already in a wetsuit and then we're not in a wetsuit and we're on the skate park and back underwater, <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty lost in this video. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing this day, <laughs> no. But um, this was, the, me and Patty had to laugh at you mentioning that your aunt, your, was it, what aunt, like, how did you say it? Uh, she's, a, she's my retired aunt. She's, <laughs> she's a retiree. Yeah. So uh, I'm the retired aunt that plays pickleball. <laughs> um, but we recently found this cool little sport that I'm sure everybody's been playing for a long time, but. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't mention my aunt is a beast at pickleball. Oh yeah, so. oh my God, I don't want to, they play on the other court next to us and there's a group of other ants <laughs> and I'm telling you they're not some people to mess with we we're, we're learning from them <laughs> but no there's actually some other skateboarders that play I won't, I won't mention his name but he's probably laughing because he watched the feed yesterday <laughs> Patty already knows but skateboarder out there that you guys know that we play pickleball with and uh, it's pretty funny <laughs> But let's look at these clips here uh, and let's get into some other activities. So we have the pickleball that you see and I'm kind of grabbing this little uh, point here and I'm able to drag my mouse and kind of get a flow for scanning through all these clips and seeing where I'm at and finding more start and end points and kind of building the rest of that storyline. So um, we even have some paddle boarding here and I believe I showed you guys how to basically create a transition when it covers the whole screen. And I also showed um, an example of while skateboarding, how we have here, I will play it back in real time. So I'm holding it with my right arm, kind of in that motion, and then we switch to another sport because I'm kind of holding it in a similar way. And we can also smooth out that transition later on as well to make it a lot more seamless. So we have the example of covering the actual screen um, here, what we do with the arm. And then we have the example that I just showed you. And now this is another example of trying to find an in and out point with going from a little bit of a slower clip to something that we can find that matches it. So we'll, we'll skim through here and skim, no pun intended. Sorry guys, <laughs> I really didn't mean that one, but. Leave the puns on this side. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, there's a there's some things that you can play with. So now 
I don't know exactly if this is gonna work, but here's part of the creative process where I would try and take this clip here and move it over to the paddle boarding area. And we'll play around with that. So we have a clip where I'm like going left to right, left to right, and you see my arms kind of passing through. And then we have this clip that we go to and my hands kind of right there. And so we can kind of find like, hey, does this work like if my arms here and I zoom in kind of crop to this endpoint and you can use like the left and right on your uh, keypad to kind of go between that. Mm, Cause you're just jumping that one frame. Mm -hmm. And jumping the one frame and kind of taking it slow helps you really feel for like, did I put that clip in the right moment? Did I like, actually crop that frame, prop, like the frame could be one more. Like you see how you can really narrow down. And I mean, this frame might be better, but also when you're leading into a clip, you don't want to create that moment of like pause feeling. So mm. if I'm moving my hand from left to right, I don't want to start the next clip in the same motion. I want to start it the very next one over. So like basically if I'm moving my hand from left to right, the next clip's going to start over here, not exactly where your hand is. Right. So you don't have that moment of like, oh, the 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 video feels like it slowed down. Yeah, so. you're skipping skipping that continued motion. Exactly. So we want to find how that feels and we can we can see the example here. And then oh we let it render. <laughs> Got a little video editing. And you see how like, it kind of was like, oh, well, maybe we can crop it here because my arm was already in that motion. And now we like bring it back a little bit and now we might feel that it flows a little better. You see that? So the, my arm was already coming up. And so the next clip, it's still coming up. So it's a way to create a transition without actually covering the frame or without doing something so obvious. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I showed yesterday. If you guys happened to see the live yesterday, I showed an instance where I moved the tip of the board um, to match the other uh, tip of the board. So I had a, a skateboard and I'll try and find that clip for you guys just to show you an example. But you you want to kind of, in to kind of relate to maybe more of the general footage. If you're filming a landscape and you're filming a sunset and you're going from one sunset clip in a city to a sunset clip in, on the beach or something, um, you would want to match the horizon lines when doing the transitions because mm -hmm. it kind of allows your eye to feel like it didn't really realize that we went to the next clip. And matching horizon lines or your arm or motions kind of helps that flow as well. So right. there's these big dominant lines in the frame. Mm -hmm. And in some cases you're using like compositional things or it's a big block of dominant color. Exactly. It's gotta be some point of continuity. Exactly. And that's like, that's part of um, the way that just my style of editing is as well is like when I'm doing these type of montages of just random clips that we're throwing together, we want to make sure they continue to flow. So, um, didn't really find that example, but we can get back to. Now, uh, before you get too far, someone uh, was asking, "What's the name of your dog?" They saw the oh. they saw the doggy clip, and uh, <laughs> everyone loves to see dogs. My dog's name is Miley, but it's spelled M Y L I E because I didn't want to spell it like Miley Cyrus. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there is no relation, my dog and Miley Cyrus. Besides, yeah, maybe my dog's crazy, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and it's a it's a rescue dog, right? Yeah, I got her when uh, she was four years old, uh, four months old, and back in Florida, like the middle of nowhere, Florida. And yeah, I, she, you know, I think she had some issues as far as like uh, being abandoned and all that stuff. So it was really cool to really like give her a home that she finally stayed in. Because they even said that when I picked her up, that she got like bought or somebody bought her and then gave her back. Hmm. <laughs> it's like oh, poor dog. Yeah, <laughs> can't find a home, so. Um, I got her. I, I can see why they gave her back, but <laughs> <laughs> but she's great. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's the right it's the right partner for the dog if you can you know if you love her for your one hundred percent. You got you got to accept things for what they are and, and work on them. <laughs> and that's what we're doing right now. We got some we got some crazy clips in here and some of like some water spots. We got some. I don't know if you guys saw yesterday, but there's some pretty embarrassing falling and mid flipping. Uh, clips. <laughs> so we'll try and take all that out. <laughs>
But now we have like that little transition that we can just kind of keep right there and keep it as part of the story. And then we can, as we narrow down, we can put it in its right place. All right. Um, and we have a little bit of a paddle there and boom. And that was actually um, Patty, like my, my videographer is also a skimboarder. And um, he basically was just skimming right past me and I go kind of dip underwater. So you don't really see me dipping underwater too well. See how I cut it here? If you don't include that initial like extra frame, right, probably like right about here. Oh, right there. Sometimes it's hard to transition as well. It's also another nitty gritty. Choose the right frame. Make sure you dial in where you want to transition so you don't feel that jump. And as crazy it is, is sometimes it's just a matter of that. I've seen some other videos that were made and um, I was like, wow, if they would have just taken that frame away, mm. like you can almost see it just from me doing these edits so much. Um, yeah, every frame counts. Really, it does. Uh, especially when you're editing on, like, if you guys like to edit short videos, um, social media stuff, mash cuts that are just really, like, punchy, um, all those frames count 100%. I, I love that you're, you you describe things in terms of feel, right? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's all about evoking a feeling. And I think a lot of your content evokes a strong feeling that people watch it. Yeah. Know? So it, it's, you know, if you want your audience to have a strong feeling, you have to craft it somehow. Exactly. I try and put my emotion into the video. <laughs> Super emotional, guys. <laughs> you can tell, it's tearing up right here. No, it's just, this is touchy, but um, I gotta get back to it. <laughs> but like, basically, I think I showed, uh, if, if you weren't tuning in yesterday, I showed this feature as well, which is so helpful for people that are just on the go, shooting quick, you know, you you see a really cool moment, and I know that this has probably happened to you before. You pull out your iPhone and you're like, gotta take the clip, and then you review it afterwards, and it's like sideways because you're, uh, the, the phone didn't flip itself, this or that, and whatever orientation, and the GoPro didn't, mm -hmm. is recording upside down, and yeah, so I have a lot of that in this video where I was just like, oh my gosh, a wave, and then I click record, and it didn't flip orientation, so lots of upside down clips here, and it's, Thankful for Rush, we got a nice, oop, we got a nice click of a button and rotate, 180 degrees, and we're back to normal. Fixed. And there's a little wave clip. This wave was actually kind of massive. Hmm. As you can see in slow motion, it's kind of if, if we've slowed it down, which is coming, that's going to be kind of crazy. But <laughs> you see there, I dipped under. So. That's a that's just a clip that I'm just gonna kind of keep and use for like what I call B-roll and maybe add that in if we have an option for it, but I don't really see it fitting here. Um, what I do have is another type of transition, I believe, that I can show you guys. Um, as we're reviewing through the clips here, trying to see what I have available. Okay, I skimmed, I fell under, so you notate that. Okay, another transition, tweaking down, and we have a high five here. Um, so this is Patty's back. <laughs> Patty, back. <laughs> so I'm gonna take and find another type of high five. So I have a high five here from him when I'm surfing. So we're surfing, and here is actually skimboarding. So here's an example of we both fell. <laughs> this is why we're both like treading water. <laughs> yeah, high five. We're alive, no. But um, here's a perfect example where you can come up from a clip that I just showed you. So I showed you that wave, um, and I'm gonna drag this clip over here to that, and I'm gonna also drag the other high five. So another type of transition you guys can do. Um, so if I swim under this wave here, I dive under, there's that transition, and I'm still underwater, underwater, and I'm about to come up. So I'm gonna cut that right before I come up out of water. And then I have this clip of Patty, where I come up from the water and I give him a high five. So in camera, in the moment, I'm already thinking of this. This is totally pre-game. Like I'm like, okay, I always need a transition. So if something cool is about to happen, I always try and remember to like create a transition from it. So the really cute little skimboarder kid is coming up to me. He's about to give me a high five and my GoPro's in my mouth. I'm probably gonna be like, transition from here or transition from my arm or something. So that way I can create a cool moment out of it and let's be like, <laughs> and these are a lot of things to think about, like in camera, we would say, to to make use of. So you kind of have to be 
you gotta be really aware and present when you're out filming. 100%, I would definitely say that the more I've filmed, the more my edits have become easier and faster to make because I am creating the moments that I need right there um, while I'm filming versus having to try to come up with them in an edit and post. Mm -hmm. So it, it does make your life a lot easier if you're keeping all these things in mind um, and trying to edit, I mean, film for your edit. Right. So even if you don't have a storyline, there's always things that you can kind of remember and just do as backup like even if I'm just filming like you know I'm like oh filming this this wall or this cool scene let me just when I'm done filming it and I get my moment just swipe this way mm -hmm. so that way maybe um, in your next clip you can come from a swipe the same way and then film something else so it's kind of like you're creating a transition manually and that's something that I've always kind of been about is like creating my own transitions and not always relying um, on the transitions in the program, but also allowing the program to enhance those transitions and really make them seamless. Mm -hmm. So, And so when you're out there, I don't, people might not have, if they weren't here yesterday, they mm -hmm. don't know, there's really just usually the two of you, and in this case, just one of you filming. So you're, Correct. you're director, camera, DP, all of the stuff. All right? in one. Yeah, all of the things. Oh yeah, and yeah, that was the start, you know, having to, uh, when I was working with Hickcase, I, you know, I went to Portugal, and they say, come back with a video, and it was just me. I went, <laughs> you know, completely by myself to a country I didn't speak the language. Um, luckily, I had some really, really cool skin friends that I met there, and you know, there's now they're like, you know, family to be like if they you know they know they always have a spot if they come to California and like we can always go to Portugal but it's like being in that environment where you're like okay I literally have no one and nothing to really help me but I have to come back with this story and really tell it without just having this one angle so I would set the camera up um, you know, I put on a trash can and walk past it or something <laughs> and then you can go back and you can kind of you know do some sort of transition and something to make it look like, oh, okay, I didn't really realize that was a static shot because I had a nice flow of the video. Mm -hmm. So if you're your own cameraman and you really just don't have anybody to work with, don't feel like you're completely limited and you can't make a video because there's a lot of people out there that don't have somebody to work with as a cameraman and, or a camerawoman and actually I, that's where I started, having no one to work with. And it's just an extra addition to be able to kind of have somebody like-minded as you and work with me. But you can always get it done on your own if you think outside the box and be creative. Yeah, that's great. Because I know a lot of people in the chat have been asking, how do I get started in this stuff? And hope that uh, hope that gets you making things, guys. Yeah, if you feel like you, how do I get, if you're, if you're asking yourself also, how, how do I get started? And you're looking around and you have no cameras in front of you and you have a phone, take that phone and get started. Yeah. That's the one thing I can tell you is, start making videos right on your phone, whether it be vertical or horizontal. You have Rush to kind of help you start putting it together. And that's gonna be, by the time you, you know, a year from now, you may look back and be like, wow, I remember how confusing that was when I was filming on my phone and now I'm filming on this camera or that camera and I'm editing so much more intuitive. Mm -hmm. So that's literally how it started for me. I never really thought that I would be like editing videos full time, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> hey, you just, you have to be open to the to the opportunities. Exactly, and it might open up, uh, you know, a new world for you, a new passion and like you kind of fall into your own style. So that's really the, the joy of it for me is like I've really have fell into my own style style and been able to kind of make make it for my own because I taught myself and use you know these programs to really help you uh, try and expand on anything that you know with rush I'm still learning things that I didn't really realize mm. that, that I'll show you guys here in, in a few and you know there's always ways to to be creative and make it happen perfect someone was asking in the in the chat about uh, editing footage that's taken vertically some of the things we're talking about with transitions that applies to any format of frame. Is there anything people should be cognizant of if, we, if we're switching to vertical? Which I think we'll get to, uh, or at least to square later on today. Yeah, definitely. I wanna show you guys, I have a drone clip that was filmed in vertical and we can test it out here. Mm. Um, the biggest thing I'd say to keep in mind with filming vertical is your, um, if you were to use it in other areas um, and try to switch it to horizontal or whatever, uh, make sure you're, you're filming in a good quality because 
always keeping in mind filming in vertical quality and trying to switch it to square, uh, you're going to be zooming in and you're kind of losing a little bit of quality when you're doing that. So we're always trying to film on you know 1080 or 2.7K or 4K if you have that ability. Even um, like I was saying, if you feel like you're just limited by your uh, camera tools, take your iPhone, get into the nitty gritties of the settings. They have 4K on some iPhones. They have more uh, resolutions to work with on iPhones. Mm -hmm. um, even I believe the Google phones and things like that, there's just a lot. If you kind of dive into it, there's always like something you can kind of do to kind of get the result you're looking for. Yeah, having all those extra pixels, not really extra, you're gonna probably make use of them, but it lets you, it lets you frame better in post. You don't have to be as as tight with your framing on the on the day. So exactly. More more pixels is better. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, all you guys in the chat are awesome too. By the way, I get a chance to like peek over and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so let's see that what uh, what we just kind of played around with with this wave clip diving under and coming to the hand. Mm. Boom. So now you saw that that was a seamless transition, completely different clip going under this wave and I come up and I give Patty a high five. So the cool thing about um, being able to really take a clip and make more fun, we totally missed that high five by the way, is anybody mm -hmm. seeing that? Mm -hmm. you know, you know, look at the elbow. That's when a you very execute. like <laughs> C minus <laughs> high five. Um, Maybe it'll get covered in the edit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but. Um, Another thing I wanted to show you guys, you have an option, you know, I could take this clip and use the transition of the high five that I go back under the water. So if you see here, I do dip back underwater to allow myself for another transition. That was also thought in the moment. I was like, high five, oh, go under the water. <laughs> create a transition. Um, but if you don't want to create a transition there, and let's say you, you forgot, like, hey, I didn't create a tr transition out of this, but I remember high-fiving Patty uh, when I was surfing. I can take this clip when I high-fived Patty, right there, mm -hmm. and right where, unfortunately, you need to actually get a high-five properly, probably <laughs> next time. So no high-fives down yeah. low and up high, but. And uh, folks folks are speculating, is this, is the GoPro on the top of your head? Is it in your mouth? What are you? <laughs> I wish I had a behind the scenes. It's actually in my mouth and it's like a snorkel mouth. So it's like a snorkel piece that attaches to the GoPro. And I also can use it with my iPhone as well because um, I, ha I have a hit case and the hit case also mounts on anything GoPro. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, there's times that I'm running around with the GoPro in my mouth or my phone in my mouth. It's like right, right here. <laughs> so I'm really speaking from heart when I tell you guys, you really can get it done with any camera that you have because I have walked around in different countries with my phone in my mouth. And it, it seems more natural to the eye line, right? Like this is much more common with where your face is. Exactly. When you mount it on like the top of your head or on a helmet, you seem like you're, you're six, seven feet tall sometimes. <laughs> it's uh, it's wild. Yeah, or definitely. If you put it on your chest, it seems really weird to have your arms coming over top of it. 100%. Um, I, I got a chance to peek over at the chat as well, and I really like what uh, Jan said, and uh, I might have to incorporate that sometimes. She said to high five my dog. Mm. Um, that That's would be trick. really funny to high five Patty, and then it transitioned to high fiving my dog. Because <laughs> <laughs> I definitely wouldn't expect that. So, Jan, thank you for the creative advice. Um, um, spice it up the videos a little more next time. <laughs> does your dog do high five? Have you trained her? She does a, like a handshake, but okay. I think we're gonna need to teach her the high five. Yeah, you gotta get this yeah. hitting motion. We, got, we gotta do the, the up instead of the... <laughs> she's more like a... Meh. She's real sassy, so she's not really here, she's here. Right. That's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys what, what we did here. Um, we created a transition between two different high fives and um, finding that start and end point is key again because you don't want to have the high five be here and then you transition to you like still here. We want to have that perfect seamless motion of when we high five, we're transitioning to the same point, out point of the other high five. Mm. So let's just test what we got. Boom. So it happened really fast um, and you can kind of see if like, okay, do I like that or do I not like that? But um, in the future, it might be something that you can slow down whenever um, things with Rush um, get integrated, but boom. And now we're back to surfing. So that's a, another way that you can transition from high-fiving your dog or, you know, grabbing, you know, an object and let's say you pick up an object and then you're putting it down somewhere else or mm -hmm. vice versa. It's another way to use an object or 
items in your, you know, screen to kind of use transitions. Yeah, got to work with what you got. Got to, because you never know really what's going to happen, and that's the basis of kind of how I learned how to edit is like being being on adventures in another country and not knowing what the heck was going to happen. I just <laughs> had to go with the flow and work in the moment. Mm. And now we're gonna we're gonna transition here. We've got the chat and wind coming up. You can tell by the fireworks behind us. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. So everybody in the chat, I love seeing all the questions in there today. People are, are really yeah, on. you guys are awesome. <laughs> get get, uh, get active in the chat now. Uh, let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're gonna be doing with Rush. Uh, you know, wh- who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, let us know, and you will be winning. Someone will be winning randomly, chosen by our expert expert bots. A uh, hundred custom stickers on Sticker Mule. So get to it. grab it. <laughs> hey everybody, we're back. We're back from the uh, explosions uh, and we're gonna we'll be p- picking a winner um, and also we're gonna get our hands on that snorkel mount here in a minute. <laughs> so people want to see what that looks like. People were asking and so it's uh, we'll put it into some context for you. Yeah. So I want to say a big thanks to everybody who's come out in the chat today. Um, so we're we're gonna be back tomorrow as well. So if you're enjoying today, you can come back with us tomorrow and we'll be at the same time. Uh, also tomorrow morning, we're gonna have uh, Jeremy's back tomorrow morning, followed by uh, Amy after that, and then we are on <laughs> tomorrow. So that'll be the third and final day. And Manuel Mendez, you have won yourself 100 custom stickers. Yeah, Mendez. So 100 custom stickers from Sticker Mule. You can, uh, you can upload your designs. Sticker Mule will print them out into fairly durable, you know, wonderful stickers. You can start putting your logo all over everything, put your branding on stuff. That way everybody knows whose laptop it is. <laughs> everybody knows whose camera gear it is. Uh, or if you run like a social media kind of outlet, then you want to be giving these out to your fans so they can celebrate you on their stuff. So it's important. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, congrats. So let's see this uh, snorkel thing. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to actually see it in use, but as you know how funny it looks with the snorkel, your mouth's like <laughs> <laughs> So you wear this in your mouth and uh, you can actually, I can actually put my phone on it as well. My phone clips right here with this special case. Um, the other cool thing I mentioned yesterday, um, there's another camera company coming out called Opkicks and that's gonna kind of elimit, eliminate the awkwardness of giant cameras it's, in your mouth. The camera's what, the size of your thumb? Yeah, uh, yeah, size of my thumb. So it's gonna be like the size of the GoPro screen almost, like just the, it's so small. Yeah, and then- Yeah, like, if you guys haven't got a chance to check that company out, um, <laughs> good stuff. And it's gonna be like, especially for doing anything underwater, it's mm-hmm. kind of not gonna be in your face blocking oh, yeah. the view, because it's you know, dangerous sometimes. <laughs> yeah, more, more ways to get uh, creative footage. That's always what I'm trying to accomplish and more ways to make people be like, what the heck, I wasn't expecting <laughs> that. Right. So that's what we're going for. And it gets, gets the technology out of the way so that you can perform, you can be in the moment. That's exactly. what's important. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait to to see how I can make some videos with that because you can you can even you know put that like on a sunglass mount, so you don't even really realize that you're recording anything and you're just kind of doing your own thing, wearing your sunglasses, and that could be skating and all that good stuff. Excellent. Um, yeah, let's get let's get back to this little edit here um, and try and find what we can do with like more of the clips and narrow it down because we're getting to a point that we actually have a pretty cool, a pretty good list of uh, transitions here. And um, for this video, we can try and like narrow it down to a minute. And what I end up doing is what you see me finding transitions and grouping everything together is so that way I can keep condensing, condensing from my long timeline and really narrow down to where I want to get my start and end as far as the, f- the full video goes. And then we'll also explore um, looping and things like that, creating a video and exporting it for YouTube and what I would do for YouTube and versus what I would do for Instagram. Mm, yes. So, so it's, um, it's really interesting to be pushing things directly to Instagram because you just have to like dump it to your phone mm-hmm. and go back. This is 
It's one click and it's done. Exactly. Um, one cool feature that I didn't show you yesterday in Rush, um, a lot of times you can see all my other assets here, which are all the clips that I included, including this vertical clip that we were mentioning as well, which I'll go ahead and you see how simple it is to just click one and you add it to your timeline, pops right up on your timeline. Now, the other thing, if you don't wanna just add this whole clip, like let's say you were recording and you recorded a very long interview or something real basic for that for like three minutes and you were really just looking for that, you know, 10 second moment in that. You can take this and you can actually uh, hit these three dots and you can open that up. And now we have uh, just a, easier, it's easier on the eye. You don't see all those other clips there. We're really just working with the one clip and we can see actually where we want to even grab it from because we may not want to take the whole clip and put it into our project. Mm -hmm. We may just want to take it from here and then we want to end it out here and that's really it. And then you can take it and you can add it right into there with the add button. Bloop. And now we have um, our drone clip. So this drone clip, we don't know really what we're gonna do with it yet. So I'm gonna kind of put it at the end and leave it for an optional transition, maybe for YouTube. It seems like a really good, it doesn't really have like an in and out point as far as transitions go. So if we were to create a loop on Instagram, it doesn't really feel like it fits. So um, I'm gonna leave it in here for the YouTube version, which usually when I edit for YouTube, it's a little longer than when I crop it down and do like a more quick uh, teaser for Instagram. So. Um, what I'll show you here that will help, you can go back to grid view, close that out, give yourself a little more space to work with. Um, this vertical clip, you can zoom it in right here, nice and simple. So this clip, Patty, correct me if I'm wrong, is this 2.7, the red rock? I think it was 2.7K, oh, 4K. So probably shot on like 4K or 2.7. Um, but you can... And the project canvas itself is a 1080 mm -hmm. canvas. Correct. So you can definitely, um, and you see here all the extra features on the right hand side where you can transform and all that. So you can really just take this um, and bring it all the way open. Um, you can even, if you wanted to, maintain the proportions. So I'm actually pulling left and right, but it's keeping the proportions proper. Hmm. which is really cool because as you saw that I couldn't pull it past my screen here. Right, you run out of screen space. Exactly. So you can just pull it like this and then boom. So now we have our drone clip that is actually in that. And the cool thing is, is I showed you this yesterday. You can actually preview your um, project in low quality if your computer is Another issue, like I was mentioning, like don't feel like you're too limited by w the tools you're using as far as even your laptop because you can, you can edit in low quality so that way you don't keep your laptop running too high. Or if we view this in high quality, we're gonna see like the actual result of, of that. And you can see, you can perfectly see me standing on that rock. Um, we can <laughs> add some color correction later to that. And yeah, we basically just took a vertical clip and now we're fitting it for this horizontal and we can even move it. Because mm, you can reframe it mm -hmm. to whatever you need. Yep, so it takes that and now boom, there we go. And now we're up in the air. So that's one really, really helpful feature that always helps with uh, transitions or just any clip. Like I was saying, you never know what you're going to get and what orientation or what project that you might have to use it for later. Mm. And are you flying the drone or is Patty doing that? This, this is all Patty on mm -hmm. the drone, yep. I used to have a drone and my friend crashed it. So I didn't buy another one after that one. <laughs> Patty's been hold, holding it down. <laughs> this was back in Florida. Okay. It was like the, fa uh, I had like the Phantom 2 and I was like one of the first people really like posting a lot of stuff on uh, Instagram when the drone came out. I was like obsessed with it. <laughs> so I don't know if, uh, if anybody saw that, but like, yeah, I was always like, oh, I gotta be the first one to get a skim clip with the drone. I gotta be the first one to do this with the drone. And then, <laughs> The drone is no longer here. <laughs> <laughs> First one to destroy the drone. First one to destroy the drone. <laughs> Definitely. So that's a that's a cool little example, uh, bringing in some diversity from the GoPro clips to the drone clips and really how you can put that into your project as well. 
Um, and I think I showed you guys as well, like the the clips of me skimboarding to skateboarding, and that was when I was we call it backside versus frontside. But um, this is another clip of me going the opposite way, coming back down like that, and here's another with the water splash, so I can remember that. Boom. So here I am again, just narrowing down, narrowing down. We're getting a little closer to where we would want to be as far as time goes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing how quickly you can cut off, like let's say you put all your clips on a timeline and you're like, oh my gosh, this is three minutes of footage. <laughs> um, it's really easy to like narrow it down when you find those start and end points and just start tweaking, tweaking. Mm, and it, you know, it, from a social media, perspective, if you have an okay two minutes and you cut it down, you're going to have like a good one minute. Oh yeah. Right. That's Definitely. The, I think that's something a lot of people start out don't realize. Mm -hmm. You just you can throw a lot of things away, you know, yep. a lot of things you don't need. And the hardest part is, is actually choosing like what you're really going to stick with and get rid of. Cause like there's times that we have a lot of really good footage on a project and uh, I'll make a one minute video and then we'll try and cut it down to like a 30 minute teaser and it's like, <laughs> And I don't want to get rid of some of these clips. Like right. you have to really be like, all right, dial down. Like what is the best clips that we have here, and, <laughs> and try and fit them. And even before that, like you have hours of footage, right? That doesn't even make the grade. That doesn't doesn't get into this bin, into this bin. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's quite a lot of discipline to say this good, this bad. Yeah, I feel like as far as teaching myself as a videographer, like what to let go of has been the biggest thing. Um, one of my friends told me in the past, like he's like. The hardest thing is is just knowing the what like what to get rid of and it stuck with me and I feel like it to this day I'm like gotta know <laughs> gotta know when to let go and you're like because some clips even feel personal to you right you're right. like man but I really like the way that um, my dog looked in this one right but it just doesn't fit and right. like so there's that balance that I've found of you know really entertaining like getting the feel that you really want out of the video versus hanging on to stuff that you actually are attached to. Yeah, and it, you know, maybe you worked really hard to get a certain shot. Exactly. But if it doesn't fit with the ending aesthetic or the ending feel, you gotta, gotta let go. Oh yeah, I jumped off a 30 foot cliff in uh, Lake Powell and it was kind of scary before I did it and uh, we totally couldn't use that clip. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, well that was fun. <laughs> yeah, but I like that. You gotta know when to let go. 100%. It's our Oprah quote for the day. Yeah, no one to let go. <laughs> <laughs> Good in editing and in life. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah, just gotta, so, so many funny frames here. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I mean, I can even remember um, where that, that end point was and kind of keep dialing here. These two clips happen to be right next to each other and I happen to find a transition where I hit the water here and then I come up out of the water. So. There's that as well, so more narrowing. <laughs> yeah, it's seamless. And while you while you narrow down more, I'll just let everybody know challenge deadline's coming up. So make sure if you are working on your Halloween spooktacular entry for us and you wanna you wanna get that finished up, get that submitted. We're coming in on like fifteen minutes to go here, guys. So mm -hmm. if you wanna win a year of Creative Cloud, get it into us. Get us that stuff. We wanna we wanna be freaked out uh, by your clips. So send them at us. Yeah, your creative cloud is so important. That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of apps. That's mm -hmm. a lot of learning. That can, that can turn you around. You know, if you're if you're thinking about getting into it professionally, a year of having your kit, basically for free, it's a lot of overhead to uh, not have. Yeah, we even um, we discovered some things about you know what's on the creative cloud today that we didn't even really realize. <laughs> so we had like a little some little sessions of like talking about all of our editing and creative work and just discussing with Adobe the fact that like there's so many different tools that you guys may you know people hear Photoshop Lightroom Premiere and you know probably After Effects a lot but all these other little tools to kind of work together with what you're doing yeah a lot of people don't know of Adobe portfolio for example exactly and uh, uh, Adobe story I think is still going like these are some pre-production tools and some portfolio tools mm -hmm. that you could you can have a free portfolio. How crazy is that? Yeah, Adobe Audition and mixing up your music. And yeah, it's, yeah, there's a lot. You know, get outside your comfort zone. The whole cloud is there for you. Definitely. So, uh, and so is that Kevin's uh, asking uh, how much money you typically spend on a shoot. I guess that would be if there's say there's no client involved, no one else is right. footing the bill for this. You know, what is what is kind of like your shoot 
kind of budget if you have one. Right. So um, it can it can vary, and the cool thing about it is, is if you really want to go into a shoot and not spend any money, you you kind of can. Like, let's say you just have like I for this shoot in particular, uh, it didn't cost me any money, you know, because <laughs> uh, it's kind of like what do you, who do you want to work with and how do you want to spend that budget? So let's say you have X amount of dollars to get something done. Um, it's kind of like, how am I going to use that in the most effective way? And for me, the way that I've found is like, since I am acting as my own editor, I am acting as my own like DP and like creating the story myself. Um, I, I don't spend a lot of money on my shoots. I find that like I minimize as much as I can to you know, get as much amount of work done without having to spend that money. But there are things that you possibly have to do where you're like, let's say you need helicopter footage and you got to go rent a helicopter. Well, that's going to cost you some money. Mm -hmm. So, but there are ways to, I mean, in, in my, in my like type of work where, you know, you can collaborate with that company and, you know, by learning your video skills, maybe make a video for them out of it and share that with them. And there's always ways to find a budget that works for you without having to overspend mm -hmm. and work with other people and collaborate with other people to get the, you know, you both are trying to get the, something done. And if you guys work together to help each other out, you know, a lot of times a lot of the money is minimized. Right. I'm talking about like, you know, value in kind, VIK kind of stuff like, oh, you have a helicopter? I'll promote this for you if you do this for me. Exactly. Right? It's, a, it's not always a cash exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a lot of what it is. That's what I would say as far as like expenses and how much money and budgets. There's a lot of that. 100% is I help you, you help me. And that's how we, you know, we both grow most of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Definitely. Keep, keep that in mind, people. Relationships are important. Being Relationships <laughs> are key. <laughs> Definitely. And you know, we all we all can learn something from each other. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. I learned a lot from uh, Amy and Jeremy's um, streams, and they're they're live. Uh, seeing Jeremy troop it out yesterday was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so. You, you, there's always something you can do. Yeah, he's cool under pressure. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Jeremy's the man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah, we're coming in on trying to squeeze it down to get it inside that one minute mark. So, yep. what else can we uh, trim out? What can we keep? We have a, we have a clip of me throwing um, my skimboard, and we I believe we saw this yesterday, but we mm -hmm. had nothing to do with it. So, right. I was like, <laughs> what the heck am I going to do with this? Yeah. But I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of cool, right? So, I was skimming through, and finding other clips and I found this of me throwing my skateboard up yesterday in here in San Francisco. So gotta love that snapping also. Mm. I, I put that point there and Rush just snaps right to that. Mm. So it's much easier to cut. So I can take this here. So we flip my board up nice and slow, let's watch. And the board's there. So when the board's there, let's just clip that. Let's see where this board is. So we can zoom in a little more. You can actually zoom in a lot and you can really get down to the frames. But the board is, and this happens too, where you see how like my camera was kind of too far down on this one, but I kind of got it perfectly here. Mm -hmm. That'll happen a lot. And there's ways to fix that. And if it frustrates me too much, I'm like, ah, there's just there's just too much empty space down there, you know, like right here. You can use Rush to give yourself a little less of that empty space. Mm -hmm. Kind of cheat the frame a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, don't always feel like you're limited by your frame that you accidentally messed up or something, because there's always ways to kind of fix it in this program. Um, so now we have a little less empty space and we'll feel a little bit more seamless when that's flipping like that. So it's interesting because I flip this one upside down and then this one's flipping the other way, but you don't really notice it because of the cut that I did. Mm. So now we have where I'm flipping the skimboard and now I come down and I'm skating. And you see there another moment where I thought about it ahead of time and I threw that skateboard in front of my screen. Mm. So that'll lead right into something else skimboarding <laughs> and there we go and so now I'm about to run for a wave and now we have we're back in skimboarding and back to that clip so now you see we're flowing a little better mm -hmm. we're getting it um, and we can even 
start from the beginning just so you guys can get a feel for the music and we can start to kind of see like where are we at here mm -hmm. I laugh every time I see the Miley. <laughs> so, boom, we saw that we've been working on all these transitions, but we didn't start to put them in the right spot yet because that kind of didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So now we can use what we've worked on over here with those other random transitions that we just didn't know where to put them. And now we can start putting them in place because they're much smaller clips and it's much more attainable to like, oh, I see this, let's put this and put that. So. I came, um, I came up from the water here, and so I want to find something that makes more sense, um, like coming up. And now I, I like to honestly go from water to something random. Um, so like, let's just do like pickleball. <laughs> so we have water. The last thing you think <laughs> about before you hit the water, pickleball. <laughs> yep, that's <laughs> done skimming. Let's go play pickleball. <laughs> It's pretty nice because like you, got, you have this nice big blue frame, right? Like you're going from blue to blue. Yeah, that's a good... exactly. <laughs> and that's a that's another thing as well. A great point because sometimes you really are like, okay, I need to create a transition. I have nothing covering the frame. I have no object. I have it's just nothing's working. And you can really use color. And with Rush, they have um, transitions as well. And let's say that you want to transition to, or you have a lens flare and the sun's like, oh, the sun hits the camera and you know, and sometimes the sun will hit the camera, it will kind of create that big flare. And you can use like, um, like a dip to white, for instance, if I put this transition just for an example, over these two clips, um, it'll dip to white. You see that? Boom. So it's almost like you can create your own lens flare and mm. you're seeing that ref that highlight reflection off of that paddle and um, you can really start to form your own transitions even if you kind of screwed up in camera and you can use rush uh, to save your butt with that <laughs> yeah the the dip to white and the crossfade people don't people don't use them to cover things as much you know it's uh... yeah it's funny because uh, a lot of times you'll see it where it's just like oh a clip and then it's crossfading to the next clip and you can really think about now like different ways to actually use these transitions to almost help you just seamlessly flow into another, you know, another clip in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not not just for slow dissolves, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. You can you can be creative even though there's effects out there that are like lens flare lens flare effect, but this dip to white as you saw there, as long as you kind of think at, think out of the box and use your frames like, oh, like the light seep through right there. Just choose the right moments. Choosing the right moments is key. You can make those things work. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, so I'll like cut this more. And so we don't, this is a perfect example when I was telling you to know where to cut. See, I was just holding that in front way too long. So we want to trim all that nonsense and keep it right where the motion really starts, which is probably right here. So now we have me coming up and even there, we, we felt a little bit of a, oh, that was slow. So we wanna bring it down even more motion. And I, I kind of liked that transition. Let's put it back. <laughs> Boom. Now we're playing pickleball. I totally beat Patty on that. <laughs> no, honestly, he probably whooped me. <laughs> I think I think that game he, he probably beat me. <laughs> These shots so high above the net, you're gonna get smashed. Don't do that. <laughs> I know. There's the, wait, wait. There's the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know pickleball terms, you're like, what the heck are you talking about? But <laughs> I sound like I'm like some pickleball like ambassador or something, and I probably <laughs> would enter a tournament and get destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, a potential sponsorship for Pickleball. <laughs> Pick something up. Who's gonna Who's gonna pay for my tournament entry? <laughs> Any brands out there? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> it honestly is. We were so fascinated with the fact that we had never heard of this game. Because in Florida, like they have a lot of them in the South. We realized, but. We didn't, we didn't have pickleball like courts, so we didn't even know what the court was when we showed up. We literally have just learned this like three weeks ago, mm. probably, <laughs> four weeks ago. So it's just funny. <laughs> Highly recommend. 
Yeah, it's a good time. If you don't want to play on a full tennis court and play a little more, like, different style, it's super fun. <laughs> and you see here, now we have pickleball going to skateboarding. Boom. Now we're, we're flowing a little more. We're getting there. And I saw this earlier, and I notated, took a little mental note of me having that other clip that didn't really have a place in here. So I'm going to scroll back over this way and let's we'll see if we can find that. And also guys, five minutes until the, the deadline for getting your videos in. So yep. get it, get them to us. So <laughs> if, you're, if you don't know how to do that, the challenge was to uh, open up Rush, get some stuff together, show us a video of Halloween, what Halloween means to you, and uh, send it to the WooBox link. Uh, that's going to be at the behance.net slash live. Check out the challenge tab, so that'll get you uh, get you all the information you need. And if you miss the challenge today, we're going to challenge you again tomorrow. We're challenging you all the time. And uh, tomorrow will be a new subject to work with, but uh, we'll, there'll be, a, be another giveaway. Definitely. So it's cool here how you kind of saw that transition. That it's just like we're going from skimming and we're boop. We're back there, and those are actually two different beaches. So, like, sometimes people don't even realize like what just happened because there's no rock there right. over here. <laughs> but there's a rock over here. But if you like do it fast enough, they don't even realize. <laughs> also, at kind of different times of the day, I think. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you can change with like color correction and and things like that as well. <laughs> but it, it's kind of cool because it creates like a feel of you know oh different times of day. I'm like moving around. But I saw these two clips here um, that I wanted to note, and I'm skating, about to do like a little stall, and you see my feet there with the skateboard. So I'm going to take, you can actually take two clips at the same time and move them. So I'm going to show you that, bring it over here, I believe it was right over here. We had a clip where I came off of a wave and I was pretty flat on the ground. And what that reminds me of as a skimboarder slash skateboarder is it, um, it reminds me of how my skateboard's on the ground. Mm. So I can use that and pull these two over. And let's see. So this clip, boop, I kind of all, I, it's not like an ollie on a sk <laughs> skimboard, but it kind of is. So like there's a little hop that I do and now I can, take that and I can hop into like the skateboard hmm. so I can find a moment where it makes more sense. So I'm kind of looking, scrubbing through, trying to find, see how I put my skateboard down? So I can kind of, and this was another example where it's like, ah, my angle wasn't just right on that, but we can also fix that. <laughs> so now we have more skimming to skating on that. and a hop, and I'm hopping down. And now we're back to skateboarding. Hmm. And we can even cut back to skimming if we wanted to, because when I come around here, wow, I really, I really didn't film that very good. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yeah. But you see there, when I went into the wave, um, I put my hand up, and if you, <laughs> got a little baby barrel, is what we call it. <laughs> if you guys remember um, the high fives, if you're jogging, if that, if, that, if that reminds you of the hand up, you already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so we have some high fives in here, and that's where I'm going to remember to put those clips. <laughs> Is um, I can bring back the good old high fives, which are right back over here. And uh, we can try and keep that in mind and try and add that to there. So. Maybe we can come through. This is all part of, like, honestly, guys, this is super, I, I have actually not edited this footage together before at all. <laughs> so. That's why it's you're, happening live. Yeah, you're, you're seeing this process, like, totally, n like, how it is natively, because I, I am, I sometimes I'm like, I don't know where this is going, but mm. it gets there. <laughs> it, it, it does. It really does. <laughs> 
It's interesting because some people think, oh, is there like a formula? Is there like a, is there, you know, some way to to streamline the process, to automate it? But it's Mm -hmm. a lot of feel. There's a lot of artistry. There's a lot of going back and forth on things. 100%. Because I, we saw this transition that I made with the arm. And it's funny because we were talking about where do we let go of clips? And sometimes it will be like, I have all, I have my whole storyline and I'm like, Okay, this is perfect, but I have two of the same transitions and one can be versus another, but they can't fit anywhere else. So like immediately when I saw my hand um, in that barrel, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can use this clip to like go from the hand to hand. But then we remembered that we did this. So you kind of have that option of like, okay, am I gonna use this transition or that? What's more seamless? And then we can, that's where I was talking about kind of looking at alternatives and seeing how we can do that. And we'll find that clip right here. And we'll just go ahead and see what happens on this alternative. Kind of crazy, right? Yeah, that's good. And I kind of like that better than the paddle boarding because we're not, we're more active. Like the paddle boardings are kind of like chilling and then all of a sudden we're like, oh. But here we're like, about to hit a wave and then all of a sudden you see Patty pass by and he's he's skimming. Mm-hmm. So that's a cool transition there where we can just and we'll I'll keep that because that just looks a lot cooler. <laughs> and I dip underwater, which allows me still to pull it together with something else. So I can always just we're we're narrow we're still narrowing down here and we're able to really just continue to keep that that storyline flow. Um, and what I wanted to show you guys to mm. Before, before you get into it, yeah, just jump it. in. Oh, uh, zero. We have reached the deadline. That's right. So we've uh, that's it for today. All the submissions are in. You know, I'll just call open, refresh the gallery here, make sure that we've got all the things. We'll review some of the uh, some of the Halloween things that people have been making in Rush, sending to us. So thank you everyone who submitted things. You know, if you submitted them earlier today, later today. Um, where do where do the new ones start? Yeah, just the one. Maybe the one to the right as well, but yeah. the one on the right. All right, we'll, we'll watch these these top three ones here and, and enjoy those. So, this one here is from uh, Equipois, uh, Equipois uh, Designers. Uh, so we'll see uh, see how this goes down. <laughs> A lot of use of Adobe stock, I love that. Everyone's favorite dancing skeletons. Mystery on our hands. <laughs> I love old cartoons. Uh, so good. They're classic. Yeah, they're uh, they're like a master class in uh, saving your animation budget. So yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you ever if you ever want to see how can how can I do something cheaper, just watch old Hanna Barbera cartoons. Yeah, we were talking about that budget, you know. <laughs> don't don't draw multiple backgrounds. Just loop the same background. Don't exactly. draw multiple characters. Draw the same character and recolor them. There you go. Uh, all right, and this is from uh, Anel. Anel, I've seen, seen you in the chat a lot, so let's see what you're making. These skeletons really line up with this music. The vibe just like turned <laughs> up. <laughs> this is much more uh, turnt Halloween. Yes. <laughs> Tuesday, so <laughs> it is Wednesday. We're not turning. We're turning up on a Wednesday. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what word goes with Wednesday. It's not my... All right. Whipping Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Only a few nay nay afterwards. So uh, <laughs> this is from Jason Rose. Let's see what Jason's got for us. <laughs> oh, this is real nightmares, guys. Oh my gosh. 
But it was the ring at first. <laughs> Starting to be surprised about what is what is actually on Adobe stock. I, yeah. I clearly have not taken a deep dive. Yeah, you guys have definitely. Wow. Okay. I have questions, Adobe stock. <laughs> <laughs> that first one, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's uh. Funny, I was talking about it was like a, like a Twitter thread in the motion graphics community about like <laughs> motion graphics nightmares, and everyone was just sharing their like oh technical gosh. problems that happened so or like bad. client feedback things. That's the real nightmares. <laughs> All right, so yeah, those those are our, our newer entries. So thank you guys for sending those in. Yeah. And I think we've we've reviewed them all, but we will review them all again uh, offline. We'll we'll take our take our thoughts offline, and tomorrow morning, show up bright and early. We'll tell you who won, and uh, someone will be getting your subscription to Creative Cloud. <laughs> and, uh, it'll be uh, it'll be wonderful. So we gave one away this morning. One's gonna get given away tomorrow morning. That's a big prize. You're gonna love it. You're gonna you get your full version of Rush. You can get full version of Premiere if you want to do longer form things. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not rushed. You know, you <laughs> if you're that. not rushed. And uh, you know, all the all the apps, all the apps, all the time. So you're gonna love it. But without further ado, let's dive back in, dive back in the program. Yeah, we're we're getting there. Um, I was uh, showing you guys how I didn't really like that one clip um, when I went like under the water and it turned into something else and we we X'd out kind of that paddle boarding to um, other transition but I, I just moved it and I found a better transition so if I go underwater there's that high five transition and I don't know if you guys noticed what just happened there but I'm gonna re-show you that I had that random wave clip um, that I went under the water I honestly thought I was gonna take it out because it doesn't really have a start point there's no like transitioning. It's just, just like I'm looking to the right and all of a sudden, boom, there's a wave. Mm -hmm. Well, I had noticed that I looked to the right after giving Patty a high five here. And as I look to the right, there we are. Mm. So another uh, form of transition that I was explaining kind of when you're using the camera motions to kind of look the left and right, you can use those as transitions. And we're just getting closer and closer to finding that flow because here we are still flowing. Yeah. Boom, and now we're back to the water and that. So we're really just kind of moving things around and filling in those spots. Yeah, it's kind of a simple idea to think in camera, you know, for this sequence, we're gonna be moving to the right, moving to the right, moving to the right, mm -hmm. or dollying or trucking. You're gonna be same camera movement to the same camera movement. That'll, right. that can, that, you can go a long way with just that. <laughs> yeah, and we were talking, I believe yesterday about, do I plan, what I shoot ahead of time or do mm -hmm. I not? And this is a good example of if you kind of teach yourself to come up with these edits without a plan, it almost helps you when you do have to plan. Mm. Because I'm sitting here editing and I find all these random clips and I'm watching the clips trying to find a transition. Whereas if I was just tasked to do the transition, now I have all these creative things in my mind from what I've seen on accident almost. Mm. And now I'm like, okay, so this worked over here when I had this random clip that I was skating to skimming. And now I can, you know, let's say you're shooting a commercial shoot or something professional for your for your client. Um, you know, just needing to piece the, them together on rush, just remember to turn that, turn that same way and on the second clip, you know, enter from that way. So use those things that you, when you're playing around and finding weird transitions, you can use those to better them in the future and use them for more professional shoots if you're not using a GoPro or your phone or whatever. <laughs> you got, you're going from a happy accident to something intentional. Exactly, you know? and uh, that, that's a lot of how I taught myself, um, just generally how I can, you know, broaden my spectrum of what do I do with this storyline and how do I make it feel like we're, we're still continuing and there's no like loss of attention because right now with social media there's so much video on there you can go scroll on instagram you see a hundred videos and how how are they going to see your media right and if you don't hook them in the first 
three seconds, they're not going to stay around for the next 10. Definitely. So get the good stuff up front. Exactly. And that's something that um, I like to kind of, you can kind of work with with certain videos. If you if you do know you're going into it in a 15 second or 30 second quick clip, try and get that first five seconds to where if you find those transitions or you find something to keep them hooked, try and, try and fit that in right away. Um, and if I were to do that with this, like let's say this wasn't going up to YouTube, I could even take this initial intro and I could even make it faster through cuts on beats. So mm -hmm. I will actually demonstrate that um, as well if you guys would like, because I mean, this clip, it's like, okay, well, I can't slow it down. So like, what do I do? Like, how do I speed this up? Right. Yeah, let's see that. I'd love to know, because I think a lot of people ask questions about social video and, you know, because they have slow starts. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, that's, that's where you're losing your engagement on YouTube. Some people might not be familiar with the platform, but you can actually see an attention graph of where people are falling off of the individual video. Yeah, so. we were actually talking about that before, and that's that's huge. Like being able to keep their attention. You know, you might accidentally have put something so important down the line, and they've already lost them halfway through, and you're like, well, they didn't even get a chance to see that. You know. Right, and you could be seeing, oh well, like you know, ten thousand people have watched this, a hundred thousand people. But how many have have gotten through to the important messaging part? Exactly. You're gonna, you're, you're missing those people, and that's why things might not be, you know, people might not be subscribing, they might not be following, so. Cause, yeah. Because they're falling off. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, keep keep that in mind. If you if you feel like you're, you're like stuck, and you know, every once in a while, a lot of us probably can relate on Instagram. If you're trying to grow, you've plateaued a couple times and been like, what's going on? And if you feel that way with your video, um, yeah, try and change up some things. Try and change up your style or another form of your style to try and keep that attention. Um, and we'll show you that how I can do that right here with this video. Let's watch it real time just so you can get a feel for the vibe of it um, slow and we'll, we'll speed it up. Okay. So the beat's right there, and obviously if I were to cut this thing up and make it faster per se, the feel, um, it's not gonna hit that same beat. So mm. what I would wanna do first is kinda get an idea of where I would wanna cut the song and fix that maybe, just to kinda, kinda get it over. Or if you guys don't like that flow, you can always do it the opposite way and edit the song later. So. Command uh, K is how we can cut this. So I find this transition to where I'm like, okay, just put my that down and that motion's kind of done. So I would wanna see what happens when I cut that right there. Now I can take this, kind of cut off, and now you, it's cool, you can still see where I cut before. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking up, we can cut it there, or like leave it there. Now I can, cut it right here where I grab my board, maybe right here. And all this can be adjusted later, guys, too. Like, you don't have to like, oh, I cut there, and it's like, oh, that's not correct. I need to fix the frame. So you can always fix it um, and get it on beat. So now I'm kind of grabbing it. And you see that little flare, it's super small flare. It's, you know, it's GoPro, so it's not like like DSLR flare, but. <laughs> yeah, it's not a whole bunch of lens elements to be, mm -hmm. uh, to be caught. But I like that, so I kind of want to cut that there like so I can keep that moment like that and so now we have some cuts and I, I actually am bored already by the time I've been <laughs> I get bored of my own this is the great thing about creating videos for people that you really like want or have a low attention span because I have a very low attention span I'm like okay I'm already bored of my own video let me just cut this right here you know the pain of your audience yeah That's definitely <laughs> and the best thing is is I love when people tell me what they don't like like please tell me what you don't like about my video. Right. I don't need the like, and, and, and that's the great thing is take as much criticism as you can and take it like happily because those people are only going to help you. Right. Yeah, and I put my video before, sometimes before I release a video, I purposely put it in the hands of somebody, like my grandma even. <laughs> grandma, watch this. And she goes, oh my gosh, what even is happening? And I'm like, okay. So if I'm reaching this audience, I'm gonna need to slow that down. Yeah. But if I'm reaching that, and so you can really just like figure out like who are you really trying to hit and what are you trying to, that feel we were talking about, like what are you trying to accomplish? And then that's how you're gonna work around the cuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think a lot of people view criticism negatively, right? right? And they say, oh, well, if 
you know, anything that, that negates my vision is, is you know, is, is bad. But you have to leave yourself open to the possibility 100%. that you, you might not have all the answers. They're right? giving you free, an- they're free, free answers, right? Yeah. They're like, hey, here's some free information about my opinion, and now we can take that and be like, okay, because not everybody is the same, and if we, we were, then there wouldn't even be a creative process. Right, and it's, it's a lot of, you might need to take an aggregate of comments to really see where it's at, but mm-hmm. you know, if someone says, mm, you know, the, the start is really slow for me, at least consider that maybe it is kind of slow. Exactly. And there's always those people, too, that, like, they can appreciate your work, but it's not their style. Right. And there's things that I watch that I'm like, I, am I bored because the work is bad, or am I bored because this isn't my style of what I like to watch mm-hmm. or listen to, per se? And we're like that with music as well. It's like, I don't listen to as much country music as this. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, hey, this country music is bad. It's just different. And so also taking in that criticism and realizing, okay, where is the work good and where is it like need improvement and how is this just like hey it's this style or that style Mm -hmm. yeah there are definitely elements of musicality that i think anyone can appreciate in music even if the genre is not your taste Mm -hmm. so yeah and it it fits very well for videos because there's there's movies out there that some people love and some people hate and (laughs) but but we can find appreciation and inspiration also in all those different things Mm So I've cutting this up and I'll lower the music a little bit for you guys just so you can see the cuts here. And you see how that feels kind of jumpy. Mm. But we're getting there. So that's where you can kind of just tweak it and we're actually going to cut the music down like I mentioned. And we wanna, you see here, that's where the music kind of drops and we love having those levels so we can see that. So we can just move it here and we can get a little bit closer to where we would wanna be. So as I put my foot down, I'm gonna actually kind of trim this up. Let's get to the nitty gritty here. I'm gonna even trim it even farther right there. And as soon as I put my foot down, like that, a little bit closer, and we'll, we'll give this one a little more, because we want to we want to keep the motion of like where are we going after. We don't want to completely just cut like I'm down here and all of a sudden I'm up here. But we can create that I'm down here and then I'm moving up to this next point, and it, it helps that flow a little more. Because otherwise you're just gonna feel like you're literally jumping between like photos almost, like because it mm. just doesn't make any sense. Right. It can be, we have the motion of the camera to tell us where we're going, we right. might as well use it. And you guys and you guys saw that example just a second ago, and now you'll see the, the fixed example of the motion. Now you saw how I actually lifted my head, instead of it just cutting to my head already being there. And mm. that helps our flow, and now we have a better flow where, boom. And it's also like motion in, motion out, right? Mm-hmm. If it goes motion, static, and then motion, right. it's way more jarring. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, displeasing in a jarring way. <laughs> Which if you're if you're doing a horror thing or you're trying to yeah. uh, unsettle your audience, something to do, right? It, exactly. It's all about emotional impact. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you how do you want to create that feel and like be a little, be a little jumpy, be a little flowy, whatever you're going for. <laughs> I think I'm just making up words throughout this whole thing. Could be. Flowy is a word, I think. Yeah. Okay. It is now. <laughs> That's what we do here on Adobe Live. We'll yep. see, mostly make up words. Yep, hey, that was an accident, but we were pretty on beat. I don't know if you saw that, but let's let's replay that here. I'm gonna fix it right there, and I was just trying to randomly cut, and I think we got it pretty close. So you feel where it's like, there's little beats in between, even where you don't think that there's a beat. Um, you know, you may not have a music background or this is completely new to you, but there's always little beats that you can find. And there's even times that like, if you're like, man, like I'm kind of new to this audio bar and these levels and understanding what you're saying about the beats, kind of just bob your head a little bit and feel it, you mm-hmm. know, like just listen and... Just get a little dance going, <laughs> and then you're like, now you know if your video is good because you're like, you're feeling it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, sometimes I'm just in the house and I'm just like, what? Do I got it? Okay, no. <laughs> no, it's especially strange if you're wearing headphones and no one else can hear the music. Totally. So, <laughs> if you're in the library, just expect the the weird looks. You know. Yeah. You're on an airplane. <laughs> and yeah. Another plane. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. You you guys have already seen some pretty crazy uh, stills from these clips, especially when I'm falling into the foam pit. So if you're editing on an airplane, just per, just be aware if they're behind you and they're watching what you're <laughs> filming. What you're editing, it's like, oh gosh. You have some, have some shoulder surfers coming in. Oh yeah. What's going on over here? Mm-hmm. Just try, I try and wear like a big fluffy jacket to cover my screen. <laughs> you can see from behind <laughs> me. Oh yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally hood up in the airplane because I'm always cold. That's why I'm still wearing this. I walked into this room and I was like, oh no, <laughs> freezing. So sorry guys for like the full, it's not that cold in here. We're trying to be as warm and welcoming as possible. Yeah, if, if you caught yesterday, I'm a, a complete Floridian, um, so. <laughs> Uh, it's. I've only been in California for three years. I haven't adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> takes a lot of adjusting for yeah, that humidity. It takes time. It takes time. <laughs> Super humid. Yeah. But we've we got about 10 more minutes here. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to show us today? What else can we get into? Yeah, let's double check uh, and see these little tools on the right-hand side. We haven't played with them too much. I know we've uh, messed around with the transitions, and I showed you guys the audio levels. Um, uh, yesterday, we expanded the audio here like that, and you guys can see how we have all these different raw sounds going on. And tomorrow, I would love to get into the sound effects and really dialing in our titles Mm. and doing the drone work and finishing off that YouTube um, part of it and then really showing you guys how I can loop with uh, Instagram instead. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, if you wanna come over here and start to really like, okay, I know that I'm not gonna have all this audio in here, so let's just start knocking it out. We come over and we go to mute and we can really find, um, uh, well, all these right here are not gonna have audio. I don't mm. wanna go one by one. So we'll select all this and we'll go ahead and mute it. Cause there were some where we wanted that diegetic sound. We wanted that gurgling when you go under the water. You exactly. have the bubbles so you can really feel it makes it more impactful to do right. that. Right, and tomorrow I'll show you guys uh, the sound effects that I will add. If you don't get that uh, native sound in camera and you're, that you were looking for, and maybe the camera just had like, you know, a mess up on it and you're not getting that, you can add that extra sound. We'll, we'll show how we put it ahead of the time so that way you get the feel for the next clip before it even happens. Mm. And uh, you can always go back and since I've muted all of these clips, I can unmute one of them and make sure that I bring that raw audio back. So that's definitely key. Mm. We could also probably get into some color correction yep. perhaps tomorrow, because I see a lot of these clips are taken at different times of the day. Mm-hmm. We can kind of feel the different color temperatures. Yep. So that's gonna be something to jump into. I love the I love the looks. Like it's so easy to have a look at a color panel and to know, oh yeah, I'm gonna jump into these. Mm-hmm. It's kinda like Instagram filters a little bit. Yeah. Like it takes it takes some of the hard work out of it. Yeah, and I think we were a couple of us were joking, the creators were like, um, when we first started Instagram, I even thought that it was just a filter app <laughs> and I didn't know that like the photos I was putting in there just for filters to save them I was posting them so that was always good times <laughs> what's, what's that app where I put the filters on the photo oh you mean the social media app where you're posting to the rest of the world cool <laughs> what <laughs> Yeah, Instagram's definitely evolved. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get into a couple extra of like the features that I didn't show you today and the nitty gritty of like finishing your video or where you can try and find it coming more of a, a better piece um, mm. that you would be satisfied with. We have lots of color stuff here that we'll go over. We have the transitions and you have your titles here and plenty of Adobe, Adobe stock titles. Mm-hmm. Well, so we'll, we'll play around with those and, and see what we like. I also brought um, a logo of mine, so that way if you don't wanna use um, the pre-loaded like, titles and things like that, if you have your own logo or if you've created a crazy looking animation in After Effects mm-hmm. using the Adobe stuff, um, you can add that right into your um, Rush project. Brilliant, mm-hmm. this could be good. And yeah, uh, something else before we go, for those who aren't familiar, where can people find your work online? Where can they where can they see what you're doing? Yeah, you can uh, check out my YouTube, uh, my Instagram, or my Twitter, even Facebook. Um, it's all my name, uh, so it's you know all across the board. You can just type in my name. I know that that's not the easiest thing to spell. <laughs> so telling well, you guys, just type in my name. Yeah, <laughs> you can spell Tony Alba, of course you can. Yeah, I, I can't even say it right, but... Um, <laughs> So, 
definitely. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll send over the links, and then um, you can you can check out some of the work there. I will be uploading some new YouTube videos. I'm actually doing a whole kind of relaunch of my YouTube channel um, coming up at the end of this year. You'll see a lot more. Um, I have a, a venture coming from Mexico that I, I filmed, and with that, you'll see GoPro mixed with DSLR mixed with the drone shots and you'll really get a feel for that all around vibe of you know how you can bring your edit together with different camera work. It's going to be great and uh, we look forward to seeing it. So yeah. thank you so much for, for coming out today. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be back tomorrow. Like we said, tomorrow's going to be the same time. Uh, also tomorrow, come in here bright and early. We're giving away that year subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud and uh, it's going to be terrific. So we're going to be back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, be aware if you're in Europe, uh, our clocks have been offset a little bit from <laughs> each other. So just double check real quick what, what time things are happening. Uh, so Jeremy Clyde's up first in the morning. I'll be back with him. And then we're going to have uh, we have Amy Lee after that at uh, 10, 10.30. Yeah. And, uh, and Amber, you're going to be back at noon. So yeah. bring, it in, bring it in the anchor spot here. So again, I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being in the chat. Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks for submitting your spooktacular Halloween stuff. It's yeah. great to see that. That was fun. We're going to choose a winner. Can't wait to watch them all again. And it's been great. Thank you again for coming thank out. Thank you. And uh, teaching us about editing, about Rush, and about life. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And we'll see you again next time, guys. Thanks, guys.